Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great, too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the show, everyone. Today, my guest is Melissa Clark. She's a reporter for the New York Times food section, where she writes the popular column, A Good Appetite. And she's the author of one of my favorite new cookbooks, Dinner in an Instant, 75 Modern Recipes for Your Pressure Cooker, Multi Cooker, and Instant Pot. So you guessed it. Today's topic is the oh-so-popular electric pressure cooker, your grandmother's pressure cooker, but the modern pressure cooker. And I'm completely hooked on my Instant Pot. I don't know about you guys, if you've got one yet, but thanks to Melissa's cookbook so far, I have made a bunch of really healthy recipes. I've made, and they're interesting, I've made lentil soup, split pea soup, salmon, risotto, ribs, barbecue chicken. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. So Melissa is going to be here today to talk about a couple of the recipes from her book. And these are recipes I've made. So her recipe for sticky tamarind baby back ribs sounds exotic, but I promise you they are just melt off the bone. Great. They are easy to make. It's the cover recipe to her book. You've got to try them. And then she's got a recipe for Vietnamese caramel salmon. And I've made this recipe, I want to say maybe three times. I love salmon. My family loves it. So that recipe we're going to talk about as well. And I'll make sure that we provide links to the recipes in the show notes. So head on over to com slash podcast, and then just click on the show notes for show 23. And we're also giving away a copy of Dinner in an Instant. It's for US only, but I want you to head on over and enter to win because this book will not disappoint. I had posted on the podcast Posse, that's my closed group on Facebook. Anybody's welcome to join. So I just had posted that Melissa was going to be on the show. And so a bunch of you had all sorts of questions about the electric pressure cooker. And Melissa will answer those on the show today. So stay tuned for that. And, you know, I'm, I was thinking about when I first got the Instant Pot, and actually I had borrowed it from a friend. My friend Suzanne had lent it to me. And it's always good to borrow a new gadget, I think, because then you can check it out, play around and, you know, decide if you want to invest in it. And so she lends me her Instant Pot, but she didn't give me the owner's manual. So I'm thinking, oh, I can figure this thing out. No problem. But it's not, I will say it's not intuitive. You do need the owner's manual, but in lieu of it, I just went on to, to YouTube and I started to look at all these videos on how to use it and then all these websites where people were, were kind of troubleshooting. So I kind of jumped head first and I would say, you know, I've had a few little foibles with it. So I will say the one thing I always seem to forget to do is to lock the uh, steam valve. Now, don't worry, it's not like the thing's going to blow up or anything. But you know, when you don't lock the steam valve, then the machine just can't come up to pressure. So it kind of defeats the purpose. So I always have to remind myself, don't forget to put it in the lock position. But um, so I've been playing around. And the one thing I've not made yet is dessert. You know, dietitians, we eat dessert too. Thank you very much. And the next recipe I'm going to make will be from the dessert chapter. So um, anyway, head on over to Liz's Healthy Table.com slash podcast. The show notes are going to be packed with all sorts of great information and recipes. Liz's Healthy Table, it's brought to you by the Parents on Demand Network. And that is an app that you can download and it is filled with parenting podcasts. I'm not the only one out there. There's plenty of great shows out there. So if you're a parent, you want to check that out for sure. And you can learn more at the parentsondemand.com website and uh, learn more about that app that you can, like I said, download easily. If you like my show, subscribe to it 
and feel free to write a review. I think I have 24 reviews, five stars. Thank you so much. I love to hear from you guys. So write a review, join the podcast posse, stay in touch. Today's show is sponsored by my friends at Super Healthy Kids, your one-stop shop for recipes, meal plans, cooking videos. They got so much great, great information and resources for families who want to eat a healthy diet. You can visit them at superhealthykids.com. And now the show we've all been waiting for, The Electric Pressure Cooker. So Melissa, welcome to the show. Great to be here. So I have to tell you, I am completely enamored with the electric pressure cooker and my listeners are equally enamored. And I want to kick off the show with kind of just like a definition of this electric pressure cooker, because a lot of people grew up with the the stovetop version, you know, the blow up kind. So kind of define, <laughs> define. And it's so funny because Kimmy, one of my listeners, she says she has a harvest pressure cooker. And she says, but the instant pot has become the bee's knees. And am I missing out? So kind of Mm -hmm. define the pressure cooker for us. Okay, well, so a pressure cooker is a very old way to cook. Actually, you know, we think of it as this modern thing, but it's been around since um, I think the 17th century. And what it is, it's an enclosed pot. And when the steam builds, it builds pressure. So you're cooking with in an enclosed pressurized space, which gives you a very quick result. It cooks things more quickly. And it also cooks things very evenly because you have this even pressure in this pot. And what the electric pressure cooker does is instead of having to manually bring a, an enclosed pressure pot up to pressure on your stove and watch it and make sure the pressure doesn't build too high, the electric pressure cooker is automated. So all you have to do is plug it in. If for some reason it gets too hot, it turns itself off. So there's no fear of it exploding. And it's got more than one feature, right? These these new, I've got an Instant Pot, so they've got like the slow cooker feature and the, the, uh, the rice cooker feature. Do they all have that, all these newfangled pressure cookers? You know, it depends on which brand you buy. Most of them have more than just one function. You know, the electric pressure cooker at its barest is just an electric pressure cooker. That's all it does. But most of the models also have, like you said, they, you, they have a rice, they're like a rice cooker. They are also a slow cooker. There's a slow cooking function on many of them, like the Instant Pot. There's a steam function. There's a, a saute function. So if you want to brown something before you pressurize it, you'll be able to heat it from the bottom and use it almost like a hot plate. So they have, a, they, they call them multi-pots. They are multifunctional. So why did you write Dinner in an Instant? You've written only, what, 39 cookbooks? Like, why why this one? How did, give us the backstory. You know, I really also, I fell in love with my electric pressure cooker. I got one because it was all the rage. People, you know, you just, you can't go through, you can't live on Twitter and be a food person and not, you know, mm-hmm. see, just see it everywhere. And so I wanted to check it out. And my editor at the time said, well, this would make a good story. Why don't you cook with it and see what happens? And I learned so much. I mean, I really, you know, I I did this sort of deep dive into cooking with the electric pressure cooker. And what I discovered is that, well, you know, it is great. I mean, people love it for a reason. It is a great time-saving thing, but there aren't a lot of cookbooks, or at least there weren't, you know, a year ago when I, or a year and a half ago when I first started playing with it, there weren't a lot of cookbooks. And the ones that are out there were pretty much very simple, very basic. And I wanted to do something a little more, with a little more variety, you know, recipes that you don't automatically find, you know, yes, there's tons of recipes out there for chili and brisket mm-hmm. and, you know, pork shoulder, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. Well, you were totally reading my mind because, I, you know, you think of chili and you think of brisket. And my mother, by the way, does make the best brisket. I know everybody else out there is like, <laughs> no, my mom makes the best brisket. No, sorry, my mom does. But it does take, it's like a labor of love. And, you know, with the pressure cooker, those braises, I mean, that is like, that's a big time saver. And of course, we're in the dead of winter now. So I've, I've been into the whole kind of braised ribs kind of recipe thing. But so it does braises really well, right? Absolutely. So yes, it'll, I mean, and that is its strongest point. I think it does braises, it does beans, and it does, you know, dense root vegetables. So all of these very hearty, wintry things, and it does them quickly. And you made, you have a recipe in your book for baby back ribs. So sticky tamarind baby back ribs. And I made these, I turned several friends onto this recipe. And this is just like a melt in your mouth recipe. Tell everybody just a little bit about it. 
Well, you know, so the only hard thing about this recipe is finding tamarind paste. But if you can't find it, there are substitutes. But it is a super simple recipe because ribs are one of those great you know, the meat on ribs is very tender if it's cooked right. But if you don't cook it right, it's going to be a little bit chewy, right? So what the instant potter and the electric pressure cooker does is it, it's cooking it in a moist environment. So it's melting all of, you know, it's it, ribs have a lot of muscle, you know, it's in between the bones. So it's hard to get that muscle to tenderize unless you're cooking it in a moist environment or you're really slow cooking it, you know, like traditionally over a barbecue, you'd throw the ribs on and you'd cook them for like 24 hours or you'd cook them in your oven in using a water bath or some kind of steam method, or some people boil them. But with the Instant Pot, you just throw them in there. And then in 22 minutes, the meat just falls off the bones, like literally falls right off. And then what I do is I, I brush on a glaze at the very end. And it's just so tangy and it's so rich and it has um, a little bit of sweetener in it, you know, which caramelizes it. And then you just throw it right under the broiler and it, they turn crispy at the edges, super tender on the inside. They fall off the bones. They melt in your mouth. They're absolutely one of my favorite things to make for dinner. And you can do them in under, I mean, it's not instant, you know, it's not like a 10 minute recipe, but for a weeknight, you can still get it on the table in about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. And of course, I'm lucky because my husband, Tim, is a pescatarian. So when I made the ribs, there was more for me, more for my son, Simon. And I love this <laughs> recipe. So you call for tamarind paste. So what is tamarind paste for people who are not familiar? And if you don't have it, what can you use instead? Well, tamarind is a really popular ingredient in um, Caribbean cuisines and Asian cuisines. It's a tropical fruit. It's very tangy, but it has a little bit of sweetness as well. Um, but really what you what the tamarind does is it makes it tangy. So what you want is something with a high acid content. You could even just use lemon or lime juice. Um, actually, what's nice is a combination of orange juice and lime juice together because then it gives a sweetness and the tanginess. Mm, well, it's such a good recipe. And I do love that about your book that it's not, you know, you go well beyond chili. And I've had so much fun experimenting with this book. It has gifts for friends. And just a reminder, listeners, we are doing to give away. So head on over to the show notes page. But um, for people who are really pressed for time, I've got a lot of listeners who will say to me, well, I love my slow cooker because I can load it up in the morning. And then when I get home from work, you know, dinner's ready. Do you think the instant pot or the pressure cooker, I know I keep going with the brand name, it's like Kleenex or tissues, right? <laughs> exactly. But do you think that the um, electric pressure cooker kind of takes the burden off family dinner time like the slow cooker does? Oh, it's the exact same thing. You can, anything you can do in a slow cooker, you can do in an instant pot. It just does it, you know, like a day faster. Um, so if you want to load it up in the morning, exactly like you'd load up your slow cooker, you just plug it in and you have two choices. You can either, if it, depending on what it is, you can either have it cook it immediately and then it'll just keep it warm and it'll be ready when you get home or you set it on, they have a, a programmable timer. So it'll start cooking. If you know you want dinner on the table at 630, you just start cooking however hour maybe an hour or two hours, depending on what the recipe is ahead. And it does it for you. But the same thing, you do it, you just assemble it in the morning, throw everything in there, plug it in, set the little control pad, leave your house. And then when you come home from work, your dinner is waiting for you. I always say that, you know, as we really want things to be fast, right? So definitely fast beats slow, but convenient beats fast. And so the Instant Pot is better than the slow cooker because it's both faster and just as convenient. So where does your inspiration come from? Because, you know, you have a column in the New York Times, you've got cookbooks. Like, How do you dream up recipes? What's your process? I always say that I get inspiration from everywhere. I, I can be walking down the street just, you know, in the middle of Manhattan and pass a pizzeria, right? And, you know, it's like you're not going to really gain inspiration from that. But Maybe I'll remember that, hey, there are garlic knots in there and garlic knots. God, that would be what if I what if I made monkey bread with garlic, like a savory garlic monkey bread? You know, you just never know where something is going to hit me. I do keep my eyes open. You know, I'm thinking about food constantly. I'm one of those people. You know, there are those people who are always thinking about their next meal. That's me. Mm -hmm. And I read a lot of cookbooks. I read all the food magazines. I go out to eat in New York as much as I can. I mean, I've got a family and we love having dinner at home. I love to cook. So I don't go out as often as maybe I used to before um, I, we had my daughter. But 
I try to go out at least twice a week and try new things. And when I go, another thing is, you know, when I go shopping, I'm always looking for what are the new things on the shelves? You know, what can people get or not get? What are things for me to experiment with? I try to go into, if I'm in a new part of town or whenever I go on vacation, I make a beeline for the supermarket because different, even just like in Queens, they have different things than they do in Brooklyn. When I go to Florida, it's completely different from what I can get. And I love to check that out. And that is inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes me think, about my mom because my mom was a New York Times and still is a New York Times reader forever. She's 85. So she gets the food pages and she clips recipes. And she says over the years, she hasn't found as much as back in the day when she was younger. And I think part of it is that her tastes and her style of cooking never changed. (laughs) She's very simple. So from your book, what I've made for my parents, because they're older and everything's nice and tender and, you know, it's harder to chew when you get older. I've made the barbecue chicken chicken out of the book. I made the beef bourguignon. I've made your Vietnamese caramel salmon. So everything's so tender and so luscious. And I say to my mom, you see, you like some of these more adventurous flavors, but it's so funny. You know, she's, she's so set in her ways, but you know, the New York Times cookbook, the original, that thing is just worn to the bone and she loves cooking out of it. So, you know, and those recipes are still great. I mean, there's no reason, you know, not to and never stop cooking out of that. It's, it's just a great book. Their traditional recipes. I mean, beef bourguignon is like very, it's very French. It could, the recipe like that could be in the New York Times cookbook. Vietnamese caramel salmon, though, is going out on a limb. <laughs> but she liked it. She was okay with it. She liked it. Yeah, you know, I haven't made that one for her, actually. Come to think of it, I've made it for my own family a few times. And my boys eat everything because, you know, boys, they're older and they're burning calories like crazy. So we're lucky in that department. So they love the Vietnamese caramel salmon. But before we get into that, because I want to tell my listeners about that recipe, I'm so curious about your daughter. And does she have a favorite recipe in this cookbook? You know, she's a bean eater. She loves beans. Mm. She loves chickpeas. I'll just give her a bowl of chickpeas, you know, simply cooked chickpeas. I'll put olive oil and some lemon juice and some salt on it. And she's happy. She'll just eat a big bowl of chickpeas and, you know, with other stuff for dinner. But that'll be her main her main thing. She likes rare meat. She doesn't like stewed falling apart meat. It's funny. Kids are very Mm. particular. So she's not a big stew person. She likes the chicken. You know, a lot of the chicken dishes in the book. I have a new book coming out in October, which is going to be a comfort food instant pot cookbook. Mm. And that one is more her style. There's a lot of pasta. You know, pasta Mm. cooks really well in an electric pressure cooker. And it's not faster because pasta is super fast on the stove. But what's nice is you can do it. It's like a one pot meal. You throw everything in there. And it's literally six minutes and it's done and it's just, it's done. You know, you put it all in there. You don't have to, you know, first boil something and then drain it and then mix it. You know, you just put it all in plug it in and dinner's ready. So it's extremely convenient. Okay. I will be on the lookout for that recipe for, for that cookbook. Yay. Wow. Yeah. So Her you- favorite recipe in that one is you can do spaghetti and meatballs. And she mm. loves that. That's her Ooh. absolute favorite. Sounds good. I love That's it. Kid food, right? I love it. Why not? Right? Just hey, give her some veggies on the side, and you're you're good to yeah. go. So um, let's talk about this Vietnamese caramel salmon recipe. The thing that blows me away about it is that it takes one minute to cook. And now that doesn't, know. you know, it still has to come up to pressure. You still have to let the pressure come down a little bit. But how on earth can something cook in one minute? It just blows my mind. I know. Well, you know, fish cooks really quickly. And here's the thing. It cooks one minute under pressure. You know, it takes a minute for it takes a minute once it's reached pressure. But while the pressure's starting to build, there's heat in the chambers starting to cook the second you turn it on. And it takes about, I don't know, between five and 10 minutes to reach pressure. So it's actually cooking that whole time. So it's only a minute under pressure, but still the whole recipe is super fast. And what's great about it is it's one of the few times we use low pressure instead of high pressure because fish is so delicate. You don't need high pressure to get it super tender. You do on low pressure and it's just absolutely, it just comes out, like you said, just so velvety soft. And tell us about some of the seasoning, some of the flavor enhancers in this recipe. So it's my take on a traditional Vietnamese caramel fish, which usually isn't salmon. It's usually a white fish, but I love it. I love it with the richness of salmon. And so it's, I like to use lime juice and a little bit of fish sauce 
and a little bit of sugar. So it's the combination. It's the, the sugar, which gets it gives it that caramel. That's the, the caramel part of it. And then the lime juice is the tang. And then the fish sauce just makes it a little, you know, it's that umami, funky kind of thing. And it also adds the salt. So, so taken together, it's just such a good dish. What would you serve that with? Just maybe with rice? And, is, and what, what veggie would you like that with? Um, yeah, I would just serve it with rice and um, maybe I'd saute some bok choy on the stove or a big spinach salad would be good with that too. You know, if I didn't want to cook anything else, I would just do a spinach salad. Oh, you know what's nice? You can do a spinach salad with some lime juice and some olive oil, put it on the plates, put the salmon and the sauce right on top of the spinach. It'll we'll get it a little wilty, but still kind of crisp. You know, you'll have some spinach spinach that's, you know, almost like cooked and some that's still raw. And that's a nice, I mean, that's just like an insta vegetable. Mm, That sounds so good. So main dishes, we've been talking a lot about main dishes, but what about things like yogurt and dessert and rice and farro and risotto? I, I made your mushroom risotto recipe. So it does so much more like just talk about dessert. Let's let's just segue right to dessert. What are some of the desserts? Uh, everybody's favorite. You know, people will publish cakes in the Instant Pot and they're not my favorite, but you know, it works fantastically cheesecake because you know how when you make a cheesecake you sometimes put it in a water bath in the oven you know you'll take Mm. a roasting pan and put water in it and it's like a custard any custard that you want to cook in a moist environment like a flan rice pudding um, a chocolate pudding any of those is perfect for the instant pot because it is a moist environment so you don't have to do anything else and it's just it just really um I think normally it would take a cheesecake takes over an hour in the oven. It does it much more quickly. It's just perfect. You know, it's really a a nice, even texture. So that's my absolute favorite is cheesecake and the puddings. Um, I've been experimenting a little bit with some different fruit recipes because I love to to eat fruit desserts. So I've been doing a baked apple in there Mm. and that works really well. So, yeah, you know, it's you wouldn't think that it would be good for dessert, but in fact, it is. And yogurt, which isn't a dessert, but you know you can certainly serve it if you put sugar on it, which is a very French way to do it is you have a little bowl of yogurt and you put sugar on it for dessert with for kids. And I, I grew up eating that. And I love it. Um, and you can make homemade yogurt in there. So your multi pot, your instant pot is also a yogurt maker. If you have one of the newer models that has a yogurt function and you just pour milk in there and you bring it up to temperature, it all it does it automatically. And then you add in a little bit of fresh yogurt as a starter. And 10 hours, maybe 12 hours later, you have thick, gorgeous, really, really nicely textured yogurt. Ooh, I will totally have to try that. You know, I love Greek yogurt. And I tend to gravitate to the whole milk. And, you know, that's totally personal preference. And it's so luscious and I'm so delicious. There. Oh, my whole gosh. Whole milk Greek oh. yogurt. Yep. Love and that. it's much less expensive. You know, yogurt, Greek yogurt is expensive. Mm-hmm. And if, especially if you're getting the organic one, but it's much less expensive to buy a gallon of organic milk and make it yourself. So that's on my list to try. I have, I made a quiche in the, in my instant pot and it was a little bit funky. I would say like the appearance of it. I was like, Ooh, this is a little bit different. It was like more like a quiche frittata, but it was mm, yeah. very, very delicious. And so I'm going to play around a little bit more with that. I tend to steam my eggs when I hard cook them and they peel so easily. So if I were to make my hard quote unquote boiled eggs in the pressure cooker, would they be easy to, to, uh, to peel? I find them very easy to peel. And I use, you know, the fresher your eggs are, the harder they are to peel Mm -hmm. because um, no air has gotten in the shell, right? So I use very fresh eggs and they're still easy to peel in the cooked in the instant pot. So I I do it all the time. I've barely gone back to, I mean, unless I'm cooking one egg and it's just faster to do it on the stove. If I'm cooking two or up, I'll do it in the instant pot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so I have a lot of experimentation ahead of me and I love it. So I'm excited about it. I want to just weigh in on um, some of the questions I got from my podcast posse, from my closed Facebook group, by the way, anybody is welcome to join. So head on over. But Leslie said she is curious about chicken in the pressure cooker. She sees a lot of recipes that call for chicken thighs, but what about yes. chicken breast? Because I know in the slow cooker, meat tends to dry out, sort of counterintuitive, yeah. but how does a chicken breast fare in the pressure cooker? It's okay. It's not your best. I mean, I do it sometimes. I mean, you just, it is the problem with chicken breast, no matter how you cook it, 
is that there's no margin of error because it's so lean. The second it is done, three seconds later, it's overdone. And you just have to catch it at that exact second. That is harder to do in an instant pot than it is when you can really watch it on the stove because it's in a close, you know, it's enclosed. You have much more margin of error with chicken thighs. They're much more forgiving. There's, they're richer. They've, you know, they've got a little fat in them and they have a lot. They're just more tender. So that's why people tend to use chicken thighs. I know I absolutely tend to use chicken thighs. If I'm going to do a chicken breast recipe, I'm very exacting and the way I write it. And I try to give people really give them enough information so that they don't overcook it because better to undercook it a little bit and then finish it up on the saute function than overcook it because you just can't go back. Another problem with chicken in the Instant Pot is whole chickens. I don't like whole chickens. You know, you'll Mm. see a lot of in, in the Instant Pot. I love them roasted in the oven. You'll see a lot of recipes for taking a whole chicken, putting it in there and cooking it. And I just don't think they come out because in order to get the dark meat fully cooked, the white meat is going to be dry. There's no way around it in the Instant Pot. So I would say that that's why people love chicken thighs. So if you're not a chicken thigh lover or chicken drumstick lover and you want to do breasts, that's fine. But you really do need to just be on top of your game. You need to pay Hmm. attention and you need to be willing to maybe cook it a little bit less And then at the end say, okay, well, it's still pink. I'm going to put it back and I'm going to finish it up, you know, on the saute function and just be okay with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise you risk overcooking. Right. And the saute function to me is the beauty of the pressure cooker because it's like all in one pot. Why not? Makes it easier. Exactly. You just press a button. It gives you heat from the bottom and it finishes cooking whatever you need it to finish cooking. Right. Right. So um, Leslie and another listener named Bobby, they're both curious about the warm setting. And I know you mentioned warm before. You could keep it on warm and the, you know, then for several hours, the food's in there on warm and it's still safe. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's an enclosed environment. It's not like anything's going to happen to it. It's kept at a hot enough temperature so that it's not that warm and like, it's not lukewarm, Mm -hmm. which is problematic. It's warm enough that there's no bacteria that's going to grow. So you are okay. Okay. Hey, Krista wants to know if you have a vegan pressure cooker cookbook you could recommend because she's a vegan And she loves her pressure cooker. Oh, gosh. You know, I don't know of any good ones. I mean, I really, I haven't, I've only seen one or two and I haven't been great. The pressure cooker is fantastic if you're a vegan because beans, Mm -hmm. I mean, I, beans are one of the best sources of protein for vegans and they cook them so quickly and so evenly. They're also in vegetables, dense vegetables. Oh, I made collard greens, which aren't even dense, but you know how collard greens oh, they when take you, a long you, time. Yeah. They take a really long time, but four minutes. I made them last night. So there's all kinds of wonderful vegetables and grains. You were mentioning grains. Yeah. I mean, rice, it's brown rice cooks super fast and you know, it's so good for you. Farro, quinoa, all of those grains cook so well in the instant pot. Mm -hmm. I made your red lentil soup with turmeric and it was so delicious. I didn't have red lentils when I made it. I used green lentils and then I chopped up some carrots and I tossed that in and it came out great. So I always feel like a recipe is like your starting point and then you could start experimenting and playing. And that is exactly what I've done with your lentil soup recipe. I think it took six minutes to cook, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, You see, you're the best kind of cook because it's exactly what I want people to do with my cookbooks is use them as inspiration, learn some technique, and then just go with it. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think that's fabulous. Right, right. And that's what I always tell people because we all have slightly different tastes. Maybe something's a little too spicy. Me, the dietitian, I want to throw in the extra vegetable. I'm really annoying like that. So I just, (laughs) it's like, why not? Go for it. So Avon says that there's many other electric pressure cookers out there other than the Instant Pot. She goes, I don't understand how that name has become synonymous with an an electric pressure cooker. But somehow that brand seemed to have taken off, right? Yeah, that brand really, I mean, well, first of all, it's a catchy name. I think that the Breville, I think they call it the Hot, the Fast Slow Pro or something like that. And it's a great machine and excellent, but it's not as catchy to say the Breville Fast Pro Slow, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's right. just it's a it's little a tongue funkier. twister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and um, Fagor also has a really good electric pressure cooker. So there are other brands that are great. You should buy the brand that has the features you want. Instant Pot is, it's also, I think it's the most price friendly. I think it's probably the least expensive on the market or one of the least expensive for the number of functions that you get. It's affordable. It has high functionality. It works great and it's catchy. And so I'm not surprised that it, uh, it really became the, the brand name that stuck. 
Mm-hmm. It's a little big. Like I, mine is, it's, they're big. They're clunky. They're big. And I'm they, just sort of like, mm, I don't know where to put it. I haven't figured that out yet. Your slow cooker used to be. That's yeah. what I tell people. Get rid of your slow cooker. You don't need your slow cooker if you have an, elect- an, an instant pot because it has a slow cooking function. So right. it's already there. So it's, just take that slow cooker, sell it at a yard sale <laughs> and use that spot for your instant pot. You're reading my mind. And, and Di- Diana, she's a dietitian and, and she's, um, she has a blog called the Baby Steps Dietitian. She's fabulous. And she, she, you sort of answered this, but she was really perplexed over this concept of, should I use the slow cooker? Should I use the, the pressure cooker? But you can use either, certainly. And the pressure cooker, like you said, put it on warm. Your food's ready. Like I'm thinking of that lentil soup would be a great thing to keep on warm or a beef stew, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Or, and if you worry, I mean, if you are, it's perfectly safe, but if you are worried about it, just set the timer so that it doesn't start cooking until you want it to be done. So you have a lot of options. Fantastic. So, so you're working on another cookbook and you said it is comfort food. So you've got lots of pasta recipes. What other kinds of recipes are we going to see in your next book? Well, the next book is going to be more uh, weeknight oriented. You know, this, the first book was me really playing with the machine. I mean, I have some recipes in there, which are for more adventuresome eaters like duck confit, which is so good in the instant pot, but you're not going to make it after work on a Thursday, right? So the, the book that I'm working on now is much more about what do you really want to eat when you get home from work? 60 of the recipes are going to be in under 60 minutes. We're calling it 60 under 60. So we'll have a lot of recipes for people who can just who want to come home from work, take out their knife and under an hour later have dinner on the table. For example, we have a lot, a lot of those chicken thighs, which I just adore. Mm-hmm. Um, risotto. You were talking about risotto before. Uh, we have a lot of risottos in there because I love the risotto in the Instant Pot. It's like a miracle. You don't have to stir it. It comes out perfect. You can flavor it so many ways. You probably, if you really love your Instant Pot, you probably have a lot of stock in the freezer because it's so easy to make the homemade stock vegetable beef or chicken in the Instant Pot super fast. So you can use that delicious homemade broth or you can buy broth. That's good too. But it just does it so well. And um, I have a recipe for pesto risotto with cherry tomatoes and mozzarella. I have a, I just today, in fact, I tested a uh, shrimp and scallop risotto with tons of lemon. It's very bright flavored and chives. Absolutely great. And a barley risotto. You don't have to just use arborio rice. You can also use other grains and barley is very good for you. And um, it makes a very earthy, very um, substantial risotto. It's just great. Is there a secret to converting a regular stovetop recipe to a pressure cooker recipe? So if you're making a chicken dish or you're making a lentil soup, how do you do the math? Like how do you as a recipe developer do that conversion? Yeah, I'm getting better at it, but it's really, you really have to take it recipe by recipe. I actually had I was doing an interview with someone from a food magazine who wanted me to give a specific formula. Mm. Well, did you cut down the water by 25% or 50% <laughs> and cook it 25% less? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's a lot more subtle than that. It's not an exact, it's not a science. It's more of a, you need to just use your experience. So this is how I approach it. First of all, you always use less liquid than you would in a standard recipe because there's no evaporation. So you cut the liquid down by a lot. I think about, well, how juicy is the ingredient itself? Is it going to exude liquid or is it going to absorb liquid? And so that's sort of how I think about how much liquid to use. Roughly, I'd say I use 25% of the amount of liquid, maybe between 25 and 50% of the amount of liquid in a standard, in a classic recipe. And in terms of cooking, I'll usually what I'll do is I'll go, you know, when you buy the Instant Pot, there's a chart, there's a booklet at a chart and it tells you cook times for everything. So you you just look it up. I'm making brisket. How long does brisket take? And then you look that up. Uh, but then another thing you have to keep in mind is chunk size. So one three pound piece of brisket cooks more slowly than if you take that and cut it into three one pound pieces. If you follow me, Mm -hmm. um, the smaller the bean, the more quickly it will cook. So lentils cook more quickly than chickpeas. So you just have to apply all. And then of course you can look up specific bean cooking times as well, but bone in chicken thighs take longer than boneless. So these are all the things that you just have to constantly keep in mind. And then how full is my pot? Because if I have a lot of things in the pot, it'll take longer than if I have fewer things. So this is why I buy cookbooks. I mean, I, you know, (laughs) I I do a lot of recipe development, but when it comes to the pressure cooker, I'm going to 
refer, I'm going to, you know, check out what the experts are doing because, you know, you've, you've tested them and it's tried and true. So one thing question I love to ask my guests is, do you have a favorite cookbook? Is there a book? I know you've written a bunch, but is there a book on your shelf that you tend to grab for over and over again for inspiration or, or a book that you just love to cook from? You know, I have, I go through phases. I go th- and I, I never just stick to one book, but there's a few books that, you know, I have a bunch of classic cookbooks that I just love. Like I love all Paula Wolfert's books. She writes about mm-hmm. different regional French cuisines. And she was the first American expert in Moroccan food in the 70s. So she has a, just some great books and she's such a wonderful writer. I also love Julie Sani's Indian cuisine, mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. cookbooks. Mm-hmm. I've, I've spent a lot of time going through those. You know, I'm trying to think of books that really shaped me that I still go to more contemporaneously. Nigel Slater, he's a mm-hmm. British food writer. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. he's just great. And I, I love and Diana Henry, another one, another great Brit. And in Australia, I love Donna Hay. I'm always mm. looking for things that I, when I go to a cookbook, I'm looking for something that I wouldn't have thought of. And so I like to go internationally. Fantastic. I have so many cookbooks on my shelf and I'm actually, <laughs> I'm in the midst of doing a, a little bit of a clean out and I've, I've been doing this massive giveaway on my website. So people are from all over the country are, are sending me just you know, like $5 just to cover shipping and I'm sending off all these books all over the country. So they're going to have a good home and it makes me oh, so much happier. Idea. Yeah, because that's I was brilliant. like, I don't want to just put them in, a, in a, a yard sale with my slow cooker, with my crock pot. You know, I, I just want them to end up in good homes. So that's been really fun. Keeping me busy though. So, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So it's really been great having you on the show. Anything else you want to share? By the way, I am going to make your, um, your bittersweet chocolate pudding. That's like next on my list. It's so beautiful. But um, oh, anything yeah. else about the electric pressure cooker? I mean, we cover a lot of ground, but anything else you wanted to share? You know, one of my big things is family meal time. And so that's why I love this device because it really does get people to the table with less stress. And so to me, it's all about bringing families together, but anything else that, that we haven't touched on? Yeah. Just one thing is that if something, you know, when you open that pot lid, if something isn't cooked exactly the way you want it, don't be afraid to take control and make it the way you want it. You know, you're trying out recipes. And like you just said, Liz, not everything is to your taste. So make it to your taste. And, you know, be in charge of your meal, no matter what, no matter where, how you're cooking. And for the electric pressure cooker, there is a learning curve. Stick with it. And don't be afraid to turn the saute function on if something's too brothy. Don't be afraid to, if something's not cooked all the way, put it back on and put it on high pressure for another minute or two to finish cooking it. You know, don't be satisfied with something that you don't like. Make it so that you like it. I think that's really important for people. Fantastic advice. And thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us. Thanks for having me. So everybody, it has been fantastic having Melissa on the show. I've wanted to have her on for quite some time. I, I want to remind everybody to head on over to Liz's Healthy Table.com slash podcast and the show notes for today's show. We will have instructions on how to enter to win a copy of Melissa's book, Dinner in an Instant, U.S. only, please. And if you love the show, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, post a review, visit me on my website, Facebook, social media. It's been great having you today. And until next time, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table. Healthy Table.